Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel, Tomcat Stitchery. I'm Whitney and today I have the big homecoming dress reveal for my daughter. The dance was last weekend and I'm gonna talk all about it today. Um, but before we get started, a couple of things. Um, number one, I realized that for my non-US uh, friends that you guys have no idea what homecoming is. <laughs> that question on the on the video of hers um, quite a few times and um, I was so behind on answering comments although as of um, let's see Monday evening I was completely caught up now I need to you guys are watching this on Friday so I do need to go back and catch back up again I try and do that the day before a video comes out because I always get an onslaught of comments on release days of videos so hopefully I did it again last night <laughs> <laughs> when I'm talking to you guys. Um, but anyway, homecoming. Okay, so homecoming is like, um, it's school related. So it goes along with high school, which is grades nine through 12, which are the last four grades in your standard, um, in the US school system. So after 12th grade, then you go on to college or university that we call it here. So that's like your, your beyond, um, high school graduation. And I know that there gets, it gets confusing with what different types of school are called and that kind of thing. But anyway, my kids are in high school, so that's grades 9 through 12. They're in the last four years of um, your standard schooling here. And um, the high school does, or high schools do, usually a week in the fall uh, called homecoming. And it is a spirit-filled week usually leading up to a big game, a big football game, American football game on Friday night. And then it's usually followed by a dance, whether that be semi-formal or formal on Saturday night. So it's all about bringing, you know, school pride and school spirit and bringing the community of the high school together and all that jazz. There's always a parade or usually our school has a Parade, where I went to high school also had a parade. So that's what homecoming is. Um, I'm not sure where the homecoming came, like name came from. Um, a lot of times there'll be a queen crowned for it, all that kind of stuff. And I'm not sure if they, to be honest, I'm not even sure if they had a homecoming queen um, at my kid's high school or not. Um, we had them at my high school, um, but I'm not sure if my kids had them. Usually it's in, like a senior. Um, anyway, so... <laughs> There you have it. That is what homecoming is. And so they attended all the festivities and stuff building up to it. And then my daughter decided, she and a group of friends decided they wanted to go to the dance, which is technically a semi-formal. So um, a lot of the girls had on like nice dresses, but they were like shorter lengths. A lot of them were. Whereas I think prom, which is the big dance formal at the end of the school year, that is more of like, it's formal, and so it's more of your, like your floor length gowns and that sort of thing that are kind of accompany that. So hopefully I explained that well <laughs> for my non-US based um, viewers. Anyway, that is what I have made this dress for. Um, and again, theirs was technically semi-formal, semi -formal, so there were some people in, you know, just like really nice like church clothes kind of. Um, it kind of ran the gamut a little bit. Her friends, um, I think there was 11 of them that all went, of her girlfriends, and um, they were all about the same level of formalness <laughs> of my daughter's dress. So, um, you know, we were kind of going into this blind a little because it was our first year, but anyway. Love that. But before we get started, before we dig into that, um, I want to talk a little bit about, um, ask your all's opinion about as we move forward with the channel. So I have like a million and one ideas in my head on ways to um, just kind of not change things on the channel because I think it's a very delicate balance of staying current and staying interesting and keeping the content interesting and then changing things up too much that then the original reason for the channel gets lost. You know, it's a very delicate balance that's in there. But um, anyway, I'm just trying to, I'm thinking of ways of making things more, a little more interesting and, you know, giving you the content that you really want, obviously keeping true to the roots of the channel, um, all sewing and fashion and stuff like that related. But um, I have had a couple of people that have asked if some of the videos that it might be more helpful if I'm further back from the camera so that, you know, when I'm holding up fabric, for plans videos, for instance, when I'm holding up fabrics and all that kind of stuff, you can see it a little bit better because you can see more of it. So maybe more more of a video where I'm standing behind my cutting table maybe um, and actually I've used that setup for um, like my love notions video that went up on the love notions channel I have a couple other videos that'll be coming out here soon that I've done for someone else um, 
not, it won't be coming out on YouTube, it'll be coming out on a separate channel, but I also used, um, you know, I was standing behind my cutting table with my shelving and stuff as my backdrop, um, but I'm trying to think, you know, I like the chair and the coziness here, so I'm trying, I'm wondering if, you know, keeping this kind of set up more for my you know, talking about different patterns where I'm flashing like patterns up on the screen. Um, you know, my uh, sew the look type videos, or not even that, but where I'm matching patterns with like ready to wear looks, those type of videos. Um, yeah, like my top 10 type pattern videos, those type of things in the chair where I'm really more chatting at you. And then maybe for some of the stuff where I'm actually showing you garments, um, you know, I could maybe do them behind my cutting table, although I like the idea of that being separate from my channel. So when I do do things for other entities then I am um, it's a little separate from Tomcat Stitchery but you know I could probably rearrange things in my sewing room to where I have a little bit different setup where I can put the camera back a little further maybe you could see the outfit or whatever I'm talking about on a mannequin while I'm talking about it I would continue to flash you know me doing the twirls and stuff like that in the outfit stills that kind of thing um, but let me know if that's something that you would like to see um, I think that Honestly, I have huge ideas for ways I would like to rearrange my sewing area, and that would require me to take over a little bit more of the basement, which my son, who likes to, um, we have an, like an indoor, um, it's a basketball goal, but I, it, he's not playing like real basketball. I mean, it's very small and it, we've had it up since he's been like little, but he still likes to come down. It's like a little miniature hoop, kind of a little bit bigger than that. But he does like to come down here and like run around and throw balls and all that kind of stuff and be a boy and kick balls against the wall and all that jazz. Um, and so he is very hesitant on me taking over that space because he enjoys that space although it really is dead space so anyway we'll see what happens with that but let me know what you think about me switching up my backgrounds a little bit and maybe talking to you guys um you know in a little bit different way where I can um, just be back further from the camera and if you might like that for some of the you know show and tell type of videos like I'm doing today which obviously I'm still in my same um, but for videos like this if you'd be interested in moving further away so Comment down below, let me know. <laughs> okay, let's talk about my daughter's dress because this might be a long video. I tried to, as I was going through this, film a little bit of like the behind the scenes and um, how I was doing this, but to be honest, I did one and I will show you guys because I was kind of talking through how I put the bodice together. Because this is a surplus, a you know, a crossover faux wrap um, bodice, it has to be lined before anything gets attached to the skirt. But this the patterns I used called for a lined bodice but not a lined skirt so I was going I mean I was like sewing on like really sewing on the fly basically <laughs> like pinning things and then thinking through them I mean this whole dress I felt like was a constant battle of like me being in the shower and like washing my hair and like thinking <laughs> through the steps does anyone else do that like oh nope that's not gonna work or how do I do this and I'll explain a little bit more why um here in just a second but Unfortunately, because I got into that groove and then it got onto a time crunch, I I just didn't pick up the camera again, mostly because it was all so much trial and error and um, I just needed to go a little quicker. So, all right. So that's why I, I really wanted to get more behind the scenes and I just didn't and I apologize. <laughs> okay, so the inspiration dress was actually this dress right here. Obviously, this is a floor length gown and, um, you know, we already decided that homecoming was a little less formal than something like this. So um, a plus of having a daughter that is an artist is number one, she knows what she likes and what she wants and she very easily went through and pinned some dresses. But she doesn't have to, um, she can visualize very easily and so she didn't have to have that dress. <laughs> she was able to pick through and then say, these are the elements that I enjoy about this dress and this is what I would like interpreted on to something different. Um, this makes sewing for someone else so much easier. She is such an easy person to sew with and being someone that did sew for others, um, for a, a job, both kind of behind the scenes because I worked in a workroom where I was just kind of doing what I was told. And I also did custom work here out of my home. That is a huge, <laughs> not having to um, reinterpret someone's idea in their visualization, that can get really tricky, especially if someone can't really articulate what they want and have a hard time visualizing, even when you're like drawing things out for them which to be honest, to be fair, my drawing skills are subpar. So 
like very, very subpar. So I can see where that'd be confusing. But it does make sewing for her very easy. So she liked the wrap bodice, so that was easy. I was able to, um, to find that pattern really quickly. She loved the, um, how it was almost like an embroidered lace that was kind of up um, you know, on the front and was in a few different places, and she liked the 3D lace effect. She really enjoyed that. Um, she likes flowers. She likes wearing flowers in her hair. She likes flowers. You know, that's that's her thing. She really loves that. So she, you know, liked that aspect of it. And she liked the straighter skirt as opposed to, like, a full skirt because she honestly is, on, you know, pulled towards a fit and flare. Um, I'll actually pop a video right here up to the uh, plans video where I talk a little bit more. But we decided to go with the By Hand London Flora Bodice, and that pattern actually comes with two bodices. It comes with like a straight across bodice and also a wrap bodice. But it has a high-low fuller skirt that goes with it, which is adorable. But she didn't want that for that dress. So we actually tacked on the Anna skirt from the By Hand London London Anna dress. Um, this one, it comes in two lengths. It comes in a maxi length and also a midi length, but she wanted above the knee, which was just literally a matter of, I think we took six inches off the length. I'm almost positive. Six inches off the length and um, we kept the slit. So there's a little bit of a slit. She wanted just a little hint of a slit in this skirt and that ended up just perfectly. Just, I mean, it's like two inches above her knee. So perfect length. She loved that. Um, and I will show you footage of her in it here in just a second. So, um, obviously all embroidered, um, laces are like $90 a yard. They're very expensive, <laughs> but we found this lace that she loved. Here's the dress at, um, Joann's and it worked perfectly. She, um, she had her colors done for her birthday, which is actually today as I'm filming. She's 15. She and my son are 15 as of today. I'm filming this on Wednesday. Um, but uh, we went with her color card. She is a calm summer. So she wanted to go with some of the pinks. And then this fabric also has kind of this gray um, that matches with her gray here. Um, it's really all her colors. Other than we did go with gold. And technically her... Um, jewelry that she should be using are silver and platinum but because she has like this pale yellow that's on her color card and I thought that this gold really you know it's not like a harsh gold it's a softer gold um and I thought it went really well and I I do think that everything looked really good so it had the beautiful scallop we wanted to try and use the scallop along the edge of the bodice and also along the hem of the skirt which was just a matter of leaving this free. This is where things got tricky. <laughs> leaving this free, but then the under part of the bodice, getting that um, tucked in nicely. So that is where, yeah, things got a little tricky. So I'm gonna show you real quick um, where I talk through how I kind of put the bodice together. Okay, I'm gonna show you my progress thus far. Okay, so this is the skirt pieces. And what I've done is I cut out the um, skirt in the, um, the pink satin, and then I had, I just, you know, laid it underneath the um, lace and sewed them together as one. However, because I want this um, uh, lace scalloped edge to go below the hem, what I have done is each section before I sewed it together, I folded up the hem allowance. Um, I think I'm just gonna hand stitch the uh, lining in place um, along the whole bottom when all is said and done. So basically, like I folded these up and then I sewed them together when I did the side seams. And I started the stitching down here on the lace so that when I cut away um, at the embroidery, so when I cut away this netting here at the bottom, it's the lace is still secured together. And then pressed all my seams up. So. I've totally been doing this project just like one step at a time, trying to think through things, trying to think ahead a little bit, but it's making me overwhelmed. So um, we'll get it. I mean, if we have to do a lot of hand sewing at the end, we will. So that is the whole skirt is put together. Only the back seam is open and that will get basted together once I have the top on. Okay, so that was pretty straightforward. I tried to match up um, as best as I could where my um, scallops were here at the bottom. Again, all of these seam allowances are pressed up and then things are sewn. So like over here when I sew the lining, I'm gonna have to like tuck those raw edges in just a wee bit, but you know, it'll be fine. Little TV, little hand sewing, it'll all be good. <laughs> Okay, so that's the skirt bottom. Now, the top, so I've set that aside. The top, um, 
I'm gonna show you one that's finished and one that's not. So I have two sides of the top because it's a, a crossover bodice that um, will eventually, I'll, I'll baste them together here at the front to get everything together. So this gets tricky because the way you have to align it because it gets, you know, the other half, you know, this is one half of the front here, and then the other half of the front is gonna be put on top of it like so, and then they're gonna be basted here at the bottom. So um, it, it's, it's, I'm not lining things the way I normally would because of that, that um, surplus front. So um, the right half and the left half have all been lined. I still have my side seams open here, although here in a minute, I will sew those side seams and I'll just do it. I'll show you real quick here. I'll just be doing it right sides together and I'll sew my pink satin and lace as one. So I'll put those together and then my lining will pull up here and I'll just do like one long stitch and then that will get folded down and it'll be, you know, nice and encased. I'm still trying to figure out how to do the zipper <laughs> because I want the zipper to be encased in the lining. Like I want it to be sandwiched in between the linings, so I'm gonna have to get creative, I think. Again, this project is all about being creative. All right, so when I attached my lining though, I wanted everything in, um, it attached here at this um, armhole. So that's all, you know, sewn, the lace and the uh, satin fabric are sewn as one, and I just, you know, lined that per normal. But here on the front, I wanted the scallop edge to be over it. So what I did was I just peeled the lace layer back and just sewed the lining and the satin together. And then um, the shoulder seam, everything got sewn together um, and I just cut out the uh, netting out of that seam allowance there. I did have to get creative there too. But now I've cut away the netting here on the edge of the scallops so that those will be real pretty coming out. And I put pins um, in the down parts of those lace bits. And I'm just going to tack those in place with a hand stitch just so this lace lies nice and flat uh, against the body. Now it's all on my darts and stuff that lace and the satin fabric are as one. So, I mean, the lace is gonna stay pretty close to where I want it to be. Uh, I'm also thinking before, while I have everything kind of separated and I can get in between the lining and the bodice of the, uh, the main fabric, I may go ahead and do, she wanted to sew on the uh, right when worn, which is this piece. She wanted to sew some like extra flowers to give it a 3D effect. And I may go ahead and just kind of drape it over her so we can decide. Um, we're just basically cutting out some of the flowers from the leftover fabric and we're gonna hand stitch them on just to make this almost look like a embroidered crossage on this side and just build that up a little bit. So I may just go ahead and um, trim away my, my mat, the netting here on this side, pin it and go ahead and sew my lace just all the way here around the neckline, um, pinning, you know, just, uh, yeah, pinning it in place and then and st stitching it down basically. Just doing a little tacks there. Uh, and then going through and building some of these up and hand stitching those down so that it doesn't go all the way through the lining. I can get my hand in between there. So that's the thought. That's where I am so far on this dress. Sorry, we're kind of up close and personal. I'll keep you posted. Okay, so hopefully that made sense and I wasn't too like gibberishy. <laughs> But it worked really well. Um, I was able to get the bodice, you know, all lined and everything. Then I sewed the bodice and the, and its lining. So I, you know, attached, um, basted the crossover part of the bodice together. I tacked down this lace overlay at all of the low points of the lace onto um, the bodice underneath. Obviously, it's sewn into the seams on the side and in the darts. So the lace and the underneath fabric are sewn in um, together. She wanted the shiny side, we want the shiny side of the fabric. Um, but I did, because this is loose, and I didn't want it like flopping around, I tacked it at all of the little low points of the lace. And I loved how this kind of came up in a few spots, you know, away from the dress. I thought that looked good. And the same with the skirt. So um, I showed you, I think in that video also, that I 
pressed up the hem of the skirt and sewed them together that way, so it got hemmed a little weird, but it just, I mean, it worked really, really well. So, like all of those little seams, um, the lace is sewn down all the way to the edge, but I had already pressed up that hem, so the hem got sewn pressed up. Um, and I'll talk about the lining here in a second. So, I mean, that all worked really, really well. Where's her little slit? I'll show you the, oh, there's the little slit. I did a lot of hand sewing. There's a little slit there on there. A lot of hand sewing on this dress, way more than I do ever. Okay, so, um, I attached the bodice to the skirt, just the skirt, not the skirt lining, and sewed that together um, completely. The lining was in there as well. And I left the edge of the zipper, because that was the other thing, trying to get the zipper in, and I wanted to sew it in with the, the lining and all of that kind of thing. So I left as much of the lining free as I could along the back, and so then I was able to put the zipper in and then flanagle the you know lining over itself so I could sew it down and then just kind of um, stitched it together with the seam allowance so that it stayed flat. And then I sewed the skirt lining onto um, the zipper, right sides together, and then I just tucked the seam allowance under and hand stitched it all along, because my seam allowances would have been pressed down. I really wish I hadn't gone with an invisible zipper with this dress. I really wish I would have done a slot zipper, but because it gets really thick back here with the lace, especially the embroidered lace parts. It just gets really thick. But you know, <laughs> you live and you learn. So I'll show you the inside of the dress. So all of this um, is just hand stitched and you can kind of see that it's hand stitched up and you actually see the seam allowance there. So this is machine stitched here where it attaches to the zipper. And then I mis machine stitched the center back seam. I can't pull that apart because I'll show you what I did at the bottom here. Um, and then I hand stitched the lining to the bodice. So everything is encased in the lining. And then for the bottom, I um, hand stitched my, I have a little bit of room because you want a little bit of like a jump pleat that's there so that your lining doesn't pull the body of your skirt up. And I just folded under a teeny tiny little seam allowance and then hand stitched my lining to the bottom of the skirt all the way around, including the slit. And then lastly, I went back and just trimmed the netting because there was netting around this embroidery with duckbill scissors or applique scissors and trimmed that netting really close to that stitching line, that embroidered line. Um, and that's how I got the scalloped edge. <laughs> okay, then she wanted the, um, the ribbon waistline. So I, while it was on her, I just wrapped this around her waist so that it all like fit well. And I actually ended up just tacking it at the top. So the bottom is like free. I just thought she's so, you know, she's, goes in and then goes out kind of quickly and I didn't want it to pinch weird so I thought well if I just tack it at the top then it can kind of just do what it wants as it splays out over her hips a little bit and I think that worked out well so I mean it's a pretty stiff ribbon so I just went and tacked it along all the way um, with some hand stitches all the way around and if you look really closely you can see it was hard finding a matching thread can you kind of see the stitches where I just kind of did like little hand stitches and stitched along there. And then for the back, what I decided to do is, let me zip it up again. I tell you, I really wish I'd done a slot zipper in this. <sighs> okay, so for the back where it connects, I actually just trimmed my lace um, or the the ribbon close to the netting again and then because this is all polyester I hit it with a um, lighter just to melt those edges to keep anything from fraying and then I added a hook and an eye so then that just kind of goes over last and then it hooks into place like that and then closes that up so then it closes up over the it looks continuous because that um, closes over there. Okay, so that's what I did for that. And then <laughs> she, 
she wanted like the 3D lace look. So I literally just cut flowers out of the lace. I mean, you can see where those match like the motifs and some of the excess and started stitching them on to the top of the bodice. And I only stitched them on like in the center of the flowers so that you could kind of, and I overlapped them so that they could give kind of that 3D effect. Um, and I had some obviously that go over, you know, the line there so it, you can tell that it doesn't stay within the parameters of the dress. So it almost looks like a corsage a little bit. Anyway, she was very pleased with how this all turned out too and then she made herself a headband. So I will pop now. <laughs> and my husband got some close-ups of her neckline and all that stuff. If I haven't popped her up yet, I will do that now of her actually in the dress. Um, and then she, we bought a, an inexpensive headband at Joann's and she put some flowers onto it. She wanted kind of like a fascinator type of look. Um, put that in her hair. We did her fingernails and her toenails. Did a little home mani-pedi. Um, and then she wore some nude like block heels that she has <laughs> because we were I was talking with some other parents about, um, I mean, they're 14, now 15. Everyone's turning like 15 this year um, for the freshman class, but um, you, you know, they haven't like spent any time in high heels yet. Like they just haven't. So I told her, I was like, let's wear the block heel. I mean, it's a heel. It gives you some height. She's only five two, but that nice block <laughs> will keep you, you can dance in them and you're not going to fall over. Um, yeah. Cause there were a couple of her friends that were in like actual high heels and you know, they look like baby deer or baby <laughs> horses, you know, like walking in those heels for the first time. I mean, it just takes, you just got to get used to it. Um, so anyway, we were, she was pleased with her foot wear that she decided to go with. I mean, she said her feet were hurting by the end of the night, of course. Um, but yeah, we went and got a new eyeshadow palette so we could play around with some new eyeshadows that came with, um, so with her color card, sorry, with her color card, we also got a makeup card that is over there. And so we went and bought an eyeshadow palette that kind of matched with some of those colors for more dramatic eye. And uh, she had a gift card to Ulta Beauty and use that for um, new eyeshadow palette. So yes, this is her dress. Um, let me see, alterations. I made the size four, is that right? That's the second, it's not the smallest size for the pattern, it's the second smallest. They list sizes in UK and US, but I may, it was a four, I think, so I don't know if that was UK or US, but it was the second smallest size um, for everything, for both the bodice and the dress, but I ended up doing a, um, gave her an extra two and a half inches at the bust. So I did a full bust adjustment of an inch and a quarter um, on the side, which obviously gives it to her on both sides, so she got an extra two and a half inches of room across the bus because she needs that. Oh, and then we also, once I had it on her, we tacked the front um, just to keep everything lying nice and straight, which I have to do. I usually do it with a clear uh, snap on any of my wrap dresses. Um, obviously, this one doesn't need to be a snap because it um, unzips in the back, and so she can get it on and off without having to have that come undone. So we just tacked it, and that worked really, really well. So there you have it, guys. That is my daughter's first formal dress that we got to make together. Well, I say together. She helped, she designed it. I just did the grunt work. <laughs> but what was really fun is that we had not seen the Disney movie Cruella yet. And um, I'd heard such good things about it that the fashion is wonderful and that you've got to watch it. And we do have Disney Plus and it's actually been on Disney Plus for a little bit now, but we just hadn't had a chance to watch it and we wanted to watch it together. Um, so Friday night, so the dance was on Saturday. And so Friday night, um, she did not go to the game the football game. So we sat in the living room and we watched Cruella and I hand sewed like all of the things, <laughs> which, which was funny. Cause like, if you've seen the movie, if you've not seen the movie Cruella, you need to see it. It is so good. It's such an interesting spin on the back cr story of Cruella DeVille from 101 Dalmatians. Um, Emma Stone plays Cruella and it's, you get, you sympathize with her, but she's a fashion designer. And so there's so much sewing. There's so many scenes of them like running things through sewing machines and like pinning things. It's, there's a lot of like fashion and sewing and the outfits are fantastic. Um, the dresses and everything. So I highly recommend it. In fact, I want to watch it again just so I can not be distracted by the hand sewing and I can really take in all of the costumes. It's a really good one. Um, so yes, that is her dress. And I like that it's short too because I think that she can get more wear out of that. You know, if we go to any, um, I mean, we don't have any weddings right now um, unless my cousin announces something soon, but... <laughs> 
Um, we don't have any wedding, but I think you could easily wear that to something like a wedding or, um, I mean, just any kind of nicer event where you want to just shine a little bit more, um, as opposed to like a prom dress, with, I mean, with a formal, like how many opportunities do you have to wear that? So looking forward, I think she'll be able to wear that, um, for some time to come. So there we have it, guys. That is my daughter's homecoming dress. Thank you for coming along on this ride with me. It was, I've been waiting for her. <laughs> I mean, she's just now of the age, um, but just so excited about this stage and to be able to do that with her. Um, so yeah, I think the next four years are going to be so much fun. And then, you know, if she has any dances or whatever in college, you know, continue that and maybe a wedding dress one day, you know, who knows. Um, but that's just fun to be able to, her to basically design and then me just to make it come to fruition. We make a good team. Um, yeah, and have that. Although I will say she has never shown any interest in sewing things. Now she shows a lot of interest in recently, like in the past year or two in telling me what she wants <laughs> and having her bespoke um, wardrobe just um, you know appear in her closet but she has shown very little interest in sewing. She knows how to use the industrial sewing machine. She and her brother both, they know how to use a sewing machine. Um, they know the basics of sewing. I've taught them all of that. They've made pillows. They've made, um, they both made their own pajama bottoms, um, all that kind of stuff. They both know how to sew, the very basics. Um, but she was talking with a friend of hers at church on Sunday and she was showing her the pictures of the dress. And the friend was going on and on about how cool it was and my daughter did say something to me. She, I said, well, you know, you've just never wanted to learn. And she was like, well, I don't know, maybe. And I'm just going to tell you, and all of you seamstresses out there will know that my heart stopped a little bit. And I was like, really? <laughs> but you don't want to scare it. You don't want to push it too much. You don't want her to go running. So we'll see if maybe, um, she discovers that she really does like having, you know, a, an interesting wardrobe and she is creative. And so maybe she might like that as a creative outlet. Maybe not, but I, there's a glimmer, folks. A glimmer. So, that's what I have. <laughs> anyway, that's all I have for today, guys. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Um, Sunday is a tutorial day. We finished up our style arc sew along. I'm still not sure what our next sew along is going to be. So I don't know that we're gonna have one starting the following week. It may be another tutorial, <laughs> we'll see. Uh, but I have some ideas, so hang, hang tight on that. But Sunday's video, I had some people ask me when I did my plans video for fall sewing and I'm making a um, knit pencil skirt um, and I talked about putting a control um, skirt kind of underneath it for controlling, you know, hiding the bumps and bulges and all of that, shapewear basically built in. Um, I had a couple people ask about that, and so uh, Sunday I'm going to show you, it's very simple, so it'll be a very quick video, but I'm going to show you how I do that um, in my knit skirts, and it really does make a big difference. So, yes, that will be Sunday's video. All right, guys, that's all I have for now. I will see you all next time. I hope you have a wonderful weekend, get lots of sewing in, and I will see you next time. Bye!